psychic detectives are the lowest of the low, just scum. And oh my gosh, you guys, I'm starting to sound like a broken record. I mean, grief vampires aplenty. So I stumbled across this one. I'm going to show you this. I've edited it down so that it gets rid of some of the information in there. And I'll give you the link. You can go and look at it if you really want to. But okay, so here are these two sisters. Um, they call themselves the Psychic Vincent sisters. Their last name is Vincent, Suzanne and Jean Vincent. And they say that they're psychic detectives and that they help the police and all that. I'll let you see what they say. So on their YouTube channel, they have a video where they go to the house after a crime was committed. It was committed <clears throat> in 2007. They're there in 2014. So it's seven years past. And the crime obviously hasn't been solved. It's been all of the media. A young woman was killed. I think she was 22, named Samantha. Um, it was a known drug house. Everybody knew that, apparently. And there was no arrests. And we're up to 2023, and the case has been solved now. So I think it's fascinating to let's see how well they did. So what these two sisters do, apparently, is they ingratiate themselves into the uh the family uh say they that the police contacts them you'll see and they say they've solved all kinds of crimes and assisted the police in all kinds of of uh, different cases now kenny biddle you know i'm gonna have to ask your favor again to have you contact <laughs> the police he's got a title he can do this he can call these people up and he will and he'll find out what's actually going on with the police if they really do have assisted. But, um, you know, I don't have any creds from the police and I can't, I can't do that. But maybe Kenny, Kenny Biddle at the Center for Inquiry might be able to do it. So let, let's see. But the point is, let's you and I, just, the, just us, let's take a look at this. This video is on their YouTube channel, the Psychic Vincent Sisters YouTube channel. I think it's filmed by the media. So this is for it's supposedly their best stuff. And it has been edited, I can tell, because of the way it's clipped. And so you would think this represents them well, that they are putting this out there. They put it out in 2014 as if they solved the crime. And they're proud of it. They're proud of the information they gave. So think about this. They're in contact. They're supposed to be, apparently they're going to reenact the scene somewhat. Whether Is that really going to help solve the crime? They say they don't get names, but they will get names, but they're going to give it to them later. The guy was just arrested in 2023 and they came out in 2014 and the crime was committed in 2007. Okay. So before I show you this video, I want you to understand that the people that you're going to see, the family in this video, are victims of not only a crime, but also these psychic detectives um, and the media, because the media is there filming and taking pictures. And now, why would somebody do this? Why would they allow a psychic to come in? Well, it's been seven years and there's been no arrests. And their daughter, uh, who was 22, is was brutally murdered. So possibly they want to get a little more media attention on the crime and maybe pressure the police to get the, the case solved. Okay. So that's totally possible. They don't have to believe in psychics. They could, they, the, the reason might be just that. Um, but please don't judge these people because um, it's easy to judge people that you don't know. You don't know the situation. It has been seven years one of the women who appears in this video is somebody wearing a hoodie, a blue hoodie, a young girl. She writes in the comments of the Psychics YouTube video that she was 14 at the time. She didn't want to be on camera. She was there to support her mom and her grandmother. And she said she was only like seven when the, when the murder happened. She doesn't know anything. And 
um, you know, I guess people were really slamming the the home, the people who were there in the comments, and it just was cruel. And and this person says this this person who's in the hoodie in the comments, she says like, you know, you don't know us, you don't know what the situation is. Please don't judge us. And she's absolutely hundred percent right. It's cruel for onlookers. There seems to be this giant crime cold case or just crime solving thing on the internet it's people are voyeuristically looking at these videos and they're they're just get into the grizzliness of it not i mean some of the reports i was reading was really getting into the details of how this person was killed and and so on i mean that really isn't necessary we don't really need to know that do we i mean do we really no i don't think so so these psychics should just be able to walk in the house as far as i'm concerned and just say Here's a person who did it. Here's his name. Did go. And why? Maybe that would be it. And uh, this this is just nonsense, like a circus. Okay, so let's go and look at this video. I'll, I'll probably be interrupting a few times. Migraines. Migraines. Um, there might be some kind of a drug connection to this too, a little bit, you know? Yes. Right? Yeah. And so um, that's coming through. And... Um, Someone may have overdosed or a near overdose, and that also plays into the person or the or the circle or the connection. Understand? So they showed up with these stuffed animals, and they're handing them out to people, like there's some sort of police force trying to comfort children or, or whatever that have been traumatized. These are adults, and it's seven years after um, the crime. And they're carrying these stuffed animals around with them. Whatever. Okay. Everybody already knew it was a drug house. It's all, it's been in the media for seven years. So for them to come in and just walk in and say, um, I, it was a drug deal. No kidding. It was something to do with drugs. You know, now I'm kind of getting. Uh, I was hearing an M sound, like a Michael or a heavy M coming in. So I want you. To, I want you to have this. Rosary. It's not a Michael. I know where the M's coming. The M from. sounding okay, in. The heavy M. <laughs> really, Michael, an M name like Michael, a heavy M name, says every psychic ever. Well, at least a, a psychic. And working in America, that uh, where Michael is a very common name, and that isn't the name of the man who ended up being arrested. His name is not Michael. I'll show you in a little bit. Um, why don't you just tell us what his name is and where we can be found, and you know maybe social security number, his address, phone number, something helpful. Instead of I'm getting an M name. What does that mean? The person who owned the house, person lives next door, the name of the dog, uh, her boyfriend, an M name, Michael. Okay. You know, you know what you're dealing with whenever they come up with Michael. What's next, Joseph? Okay. We'll see. It's just one of my special rosaries. It's, 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 it's a special rosary. Very healing. Very healing. healing. And uh, it's comforting this knowing that she is in heaven. And in heaven, and um, just, I want you to have. I want you to have that, and she'll she'll come to you in dreams. We're going to get that door. Heavily religious angle meant to invoke whatever it is they want to invoke to get comfort from the people. It's, give me a break. She's going to come to you in dreams. No kidding. Your loved one was brutally murdered in the house that you still live in, and it's not been solved. You think maybe she's being, she's dreaming about her. The whole family is probably dreaming about her. Tell us something we don't already know, Suzanne Vincent or Jean Vincent. I mean, lame. This is your good stuff. Let's see the good stuff. Come on now. Leads or something or 50 ideas. Mm -hmm. And when we come in and we do this, what happens is they say, you know what? How did they know all this stuff that's in the case file? Maybe we should go take a look at the guy with the C name or the girl with the M mm. sounding name. Uh, how did they know she had a tattoo? Or how did they know how, what his a job description was? It's law enforcement who solves it, you know, with yes. our tools. We're just, you know, giving a, uh, a, uh, 
intuitive uh, profiling of, of the a character that we think that killed Samantha and the people that are involved in this. But it's up to law enforcement to take these leads and to take a first, second, or third look into it. Okay, so there are people involved. Well, I know the case has already been solved and it is a person, a male, not people involved. And it's all, all law enforcement should be solving this. Well, yeah, law enforcement should be solving this. And <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. You can read my mind now. By now, you can read my mind. You're saying it's that's a reason she she likes that. She's like, don't be sad. I'm I'm okay. Energy is always energy. You know, we just transform our being. And she's with us. She's around us. I like to quote Einstein. He says, we just transform energy. That's it. We just lose our physical. So, she is with us. She is around us. And I was also seeing um, around the pond. I don't know if you have like little bulbs of of uh, the little light blue or, or very pale pink things growing up too around it but very very pretty little colors just yeah. like you know when you meditate and you love these stuff. all right so that's very helpful not to solving this crime that when you meditate there's little blue and pink what that what she's in peace it's okay look you're not helping anybody lady this isn't help. It isn't help for that family. You're just putting them right through the grief again. Right, right smack dab. Seven years later, the crime has not been solved. You're there with a the TV crew. Photographer, can you hear him clicking? Click, 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 click with his camera like he's going to capture something amazing. He's taking a picture of her holding a rosary and handing it to this woman. Um, like that was some sort of news media um, breakthrough or some kind of nonsense like that. It was just predatory feeling paparazzi like so the person came in through the back no. it's a male i'm getting a female energy out here <coughs> there's at least two people that were in the house at the time and i'm seeing them ransack the house i'm actually seeing them um for some reason i'm in the bedroom and there, is there's just two bedrooms in here yeah. two bedrooms is she gonna let us go through the whole house okay two bedrooms and i see them like emptying drawers and putting stuff okay according to the reports that i was able to read and keep in mind this is seven years old at the time that this is filmed so who knows what's been in the media and what's what they've heard from these people even earlier in the day i don't believe that there was any well first off it's not helpful which door the person entered in that's not going to solve the crime nor as uh, if the, they ran, uh, you know, pulled out all the drawers and went through the house and spent 45 minutes there, that isn't helpful either, right? I mean, how is that going to solve the crime? Think of it that way. What's missing? We still don't know the man's name, where he lives, anything like that. Um, they're getting a woman energy too, but not Samantha's apparently. And that, that's not helpful. As uh, far as we can tell, it's just a man involved. Um, went in to drive, buy drugs. Yes, they knew who he was, but um, the police have known who he was for a very long time, that it was very likely who he was. Now, how much of that's leaked to the press? How much of that is known? I don't know. The family may have known who it was because it was the guy they picked up in 2023 is the person who saw her last. Everybody knows he was there last with her buying drugs. So it's not saying a lot. Like I said, we don't know what she knows. showing me a switching of things so this is considered the living room correct yeah, no living okay room diner, yeah. living room diner because i'm showing me that the person came in through this way and uh this is considered the kitchen and that's considered the uh front door and if there was a some sort of a struggle right in here and there's a struggle like right in here well she like found I don't know if she like found right in here someplace. Yeah, she was found right here. Right in here, between yeah, here, the struggle, right between the spots. Right okay. Well, I was getting this energy right in here. Um, oh, gosh, he's got, this guy's got some arms on him. You know what I mean? He's like a strong guy. So he definitely works in construction or he works with lift and stuff. It, 
So, you know, and he, um, I'm kind of getting that he strong-armed her from real bad mm -hmm. in the back. I, I, I hesitate because I didn't want to upset you. So, um, I don't give names. I will talk mm -hmm. about it later on in private. Yeah. I just, we will do a different profile, but we're giving enough that, you know, that they know we know, mm -hmm. and that someone is going to give this person up, so to speak. Um, where's, where's, is it, and it's all on one floor, is a bedroom upstairs. Uh -huh. Well, she doesn't know that it's a single story house. <laughs> she is this considered the living room? Is this considered a kitchen? Is this considered the front door? That was pretty strange. Did they find her here in the kitchen? No, they found her over here in the living room. Did uh, was there more than one person? I mean, it's just there was a struggle. All of this is probably already in the media. All I'm reading right now. I guess I could have gone back and looked at what was in there in 2007, but that would, that wouldn't be right because I couldn't look at everything. And then these people are on the East coast. They probably have better coverage and heard more stories about it. So even if I was to know exactly what was in the papers in 2007 to 2014, we don't know what they could have possibly found out elsewhere. You know, it's considered a it's kitchen. She struggled. Well, yeah, she struggled. Her her left ring finger was broken. Her throat was cut. Her skull was fractured. She was lying in a pool of blood in her living room and her friend found her body. So yeah, it was a bit violent. I really feel it has to do with money and some stuff that was in some sort of a lockbox or mm -hmm. some sort of a box, but they're looking for keys. And they think that Samantha knows about these keys. And really, it's a family member who knows about it. It's not Samantha so much. So I'm getting another male in the family circle. And I feel that there was some sort of, uh, I want the keys. He owes, You owe me this. And I know you're lying. And when she's begged and said, I don't really know anything. And also she told him, get the hell out of here. And she'd kick him. She's a kicker. She's yes, a she is. fighter. And then he just came up after. He was in the house for a good 45 minutes, so he was here for a while. So uh, she knew who he was. He didn't kill her right away. He looked, and then afterwards he, he killed her. He couldn't find what he wanted. Okay, again, she's saying you know who he is, or they know who he is. And, you know, if you're if you're the mom of this and it's been seven years how does that how do you think that makes you feel that somebody's accusing you of saying you know it's known you know who this guy is i mean that's going to make you feel pretty bad because you haven't come up with the name of who this person is well i don't know maybe she did because as i said now that we've caught the guy they've just they've said it was the guy who was here um that the last person to see her so I don't know. Oh, about the guy, I'll show you his photo in a few minutes so we can see what kind of a construction worker, um, big, big muscular guy who, who uh, did this to her. I'll show you those in a minute. Um, your son knows who he is. Guys will put the... Uh, or something, um... I don't know how to, I got one little quick thing, like they called him like Chad or Chattanooga or something like that, you know. No, you had a nickname, but Chuckles. You, Chuckles. 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 I was hearing the ch 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 mm -hmm. Okay, is this Chuck. all the same person I'm picking yeah. up over there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chuckles, the coloring. Um, let me look at my notes here. Chuckles. Ch I had somebody ch pull up beside ch me and say, ch why are you bothering Chuckles for it? <laughs> Right in front of the police station. Yeah, right? Probably a month after she got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You got to give these to law enforcement. Yeah, you got to give this to law enforcement. Um, got to give it to law enforcement. Uh, all we do is we are getting a vision or quick flash of who we think did it. Getting. You have to give this to law enforcement. Chuckles. Now, I, I don't even know what that was about. She says, is it the same person that was over here? A ch 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 Chattanooga? Is it the same person that was over here? 
that you'd already come up with? Are you trying to tell us the name of the person who murdered her is Chuckles? Chaganuga? Ch -ch How is that helpful? Even still, I don't think that's what she's trying to do is give the name of the murderer because, because the mom is saying, oh yeah, the the uh um as if as if they are they already know that so i don't know what that's all in there about but okay whatever some names um that you know but it's you know we'll talk about it later on in more detail so that law enforcement actually puts the profile together and decide this is where we're going to spend our resources and it will at. be solved and it, it will, will be, be solved. solved. Do you know, do you have a time? Um, I feel the door's opened now. It could be uh, any time going forward now. I do see I do see the closure aspect of it, and that's what I'm getting, a good 80% closure. She's showing me we're going to get the closure we need. So that tells me that, um, you know, there, there must be some kind of DNA evidence or some kind of items or, or a actual witness that'll come forward and say I was there that night a little plea bargaining because of all the money and drug connections mm -hmm. someone might be now in jail saying listen I don't want to do all this time I know information so it might come up it might come across like a, a plea bargain type of thing um, it is what I'm getting and they can always contact us if they don't want to go to the police they can you know Google us so they can contact us and give us any kind of uh, names or more information you know they can feel free to uh you know to hit the website or to uh you know to to email and they can be anonymous just give us the name give us a description of the of what you know but we're getting so several that, other ident identifiers and other images that we're going to share with you afterwards afterwards <coughs> yeah. Yeah. excuse me what is your website okay so just give us the name Give us the description. Tell us what you know. Aren't they there to do this? Aren't they the ones who are supposed to be giving the name, the description, and and so on? I'm confused. What the heck? Right? Somebody's going to come forward. Oh, I love that. Any time now. Uh, could be any day going forward now because like as if they're giving so much information that the police are going to they're giving so much information that the police should be able to get this video and oh no way I'm sorry they can't use the video they're going to make these these people the family take the notes to the police because the police don't give a crap about what they're saying obviously because if they work with the police all the time well then they would just contact the police or the police would be there with them but no they want the family to contact the police and so now that the police are going to have all this information they're going to waltz on down and they're going to arrest this person whoever oh persons and who committed the crime and we know that doesn't happen because it's 2023 before they arrest him. And this is filmed in, in 2014. So what is that, nine years later? So yeah, eventually it is solved. I guess it depends on your, your meaning of the word eventually. Um, yeah, okay. I guess not all crimes are solved. So, I mean, she's right. If, if eventually it is solved, and this time it was solved, sometimes like you say, they aren't all solved so vincent.com uh psychic vincent sisters.com uh that would be that'll be fine but this will this will get solved and the people who are uh, accountable they will be they will it will be solved i have images i have more identifiers i'm gonna give you to give to law enforcement so they know how to do their job we're just a tool to help with everything and the cop needs to go knock on the door and make a couple of rests here, and I think that'll be happening. And, and I do troopers. still feel that she's got either hair strands or something that they have, or DNA that they can match with this person. And she said, "I got him. I scratched him. I pulled his hair." And she was a tiger. And she says, "There's something she there." So hard. She yeah. broke her 
she broke her fingers and broke her anger. Okay, because she's telling me that that she definitely left evidence behind, and law enforcement needs to pursue that for her and to bring justice for her, for Samantha. But she's telling me that I pulling and, and fighting like a tiger. And so, but she lets me know she is okay, and um, she, she's around us here. But she says, uh, the information we gave you, I want you to write it all down, and then we'll tell you more, and we'll put the, put the dots together, and then you can give that all back to law enforcement so they can reinforce our notes and to, you know, to use the resources to pursue this particular person uh, with, with the C and um, the other person with the M. And then also, um, I feel that there is going to be, uh, I do feel next couple of weeks, somebody's going to tell us something. I'm getting an energy that someone's going to let us, there's going to be some sort of a break or something. I just feel something like uh, that some of these females are getting mad at this person now, that they're, they're not all lovey-dovey anymore. They're so, older, more mature, and it's <clears> like, <throat> let's, just, let's just get some closure. Okay, so somebody with a C name, somebody with an M name, some women, a couple of arrests that need to be made. Um, the, well, we know that his not, even if, even if his name starts with a C, first, middle, last name, or the street he lives on, or the city he lives in starts with a C, how is that helpful to the police? It's not. It's wasting their time and re-victimizing this family, right? Okay. It's going to be solved in the next couple of weeks. Somebody's going to come forward with some information. No, it's nine years later. Um, again, with the, you have to give this to the police because they laugh at us and they won't take any information from us because they know we're full of it. I mean, why don't you just say that, Jean or Suzanne? <laughs> because the 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 family has to give this to the police. That's really weird. So somebody's going to come forward and make a confession or something that they're now mature and they don't. Okay, so maybe that's what happened. What is it? Uh, how many years after? 20, 16 years later, somebody came forward. Oh, something about DNA. Well, if they had DNA, DNA, hair sample or whatever, or scratched him, they probably would have figured this out a lot longer ago because the police said this is the number one suspect they had from right that day. This is the guy we knew. As soon as we knew that this is the last person who saw her, he was a guy who was buying drugs. We suspected him. We just didn't have any proof. So if there was hair, if there was, if there was uh, um, blood from him, if there was scratches from him, you know, under her nails, this would have been solved back in 2007, 2008. But no, it... 2023 is when they finally make the arrest. So I don't know what this lady's talking about. She's dreaming or something. Maybe it's coming to her in a dream. I, I'm not quite so sure about that, but that's, give me a break. And again, she's, they're re-victimizing this family, not only by saying, you know who this person is, but she said, your son knows who this person is. Is that okay? Now the son is going to be under this, you know, magnifying lens and this feeling of guilt by everybody in that family saying, you know who it is, you know who it is, you know who it is. Why are you protecting the person? Why are you, you have information. Why are you protecting him? It's just wrong that the son, he's just, you know, probably just an innocent victim. It's his sister who was brutally murdered in the house they still live in. And now he's got the added suspicion over his head for 16 years or whatever it is. Well, I guess it hasn't been 16 years, but nine years longer after this woman is, you know, blabbering, flapping her gums at him. It's, you don't think about it, but there's more victims in these kinds of um, grief vampire psychic detect detectives than you would imagine. This is emotional. It's, it's harmful, it's re-victimizing, it's manipulating their emotions, the mom's crying, everybody's upset. Well, some of them look kind of skeptical and they're like, yeah, right. Let's let's finish this off, we're almost done. 
Z I E. Do, Vincent. You do a lot of this for uh, for, for the uh, for police. Yes, we volunteer our time. They always contact us. They always seek us out, and we always volunteer our time. Like the two and a half hour road trip up here, that's all our time. We're very, I believe in God, and whatever tools we were to help her to give to law enforcement, it's the uniform officers need, needs to go out there and follow what we picked. And we have solved cases. We have solved cases. The John Yelnick case, we were involved with that one in Blairsville, and our leads helped to convict Kevin Foley. Okay, so she says it was a two and a half hour drive like somebody asked her to come up here. You know why should they do this? They'll say, we're not taking any money for this at all. Well, yeah, you're you're darn right. Nobody's paying you to do this because guess what? If you get anything right, anything that could be manipulated into uh, looking like it's right when the crime is actually solved by like legitimate means, then it's then you're famous. You'll have a TV show. You'll be able to ride this puppy to the bank. Keep in mind that the video we are watching, well, I've edited it to take a lot of time out of it, but the video that they put up on their YouTube channel is edited. So we don't know how much nonsense was on there that they edited down to what they think is the best back in 2014. Remember, the guy's not caught till 2023, so nine years later. But it's edited. So she's going on about, oh, we've solved all these crimes. Well, I might have to look into that. I looked at like one, um, somebody she mentions, and um, the person, somebody was arrested for the crime. It was turned out to be the guy's wife, ex-wife. They were filing for divorce the next day. They're filing the paperwork, and the next day he was murdered. I think right before the papers were signed and the, her ex-boyfriend, no, the woman's boyfriend who was a uh, police officer committed the crime. So anyway, there's a whole bunch. I mean, on their website, there's all sorts of information about different crimes they've, they've solved or helped or whatever but i didn't see no psychic's name in in the press release i was reading uh i probably a good 25 30 years uh you know uh you know a, a missing person's profile are using the intuition you and know with, and out of state cases real investigative skills too we'll use google there was a case in maryland delaware we solved it took like four or five years for it to happen but uh, there's also we gave new clues to uh the evan city case that um, we sat down with, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, like in, like in the John Yelna case, uh, we all of a sudden seen a flash of a bag. We knew it was law enforcement and we had reddish color hair. And that's. And their video cuts off right there. That is the ending to their video where she's starting to talk about this other case where they found flashes of a bag and somebody with red hair. I'm sure that was really helpful. The police were out in droves just up and down the streets looking for somebody with red hair and a bag that's helpful so their video cuts off right there they didn't do a really great job editing but you know 2014 when they're making the video uh, um maybe they didn't have great tools heck i'm not the world's best editor of videos as i'm sure you'll all say it's um you know just the, what it is but the point is this they said that the police reach out to them okay that is a claim and i'm curious kenny if you're watching this can you please contact the police um the police reach out to them that's what they said yet they've made all these impressions they they don't get names but yet they're going to get names and they're going to tell these people later per, off camera i guess i wonder why and then they're going to, why did they even need to have the press there? Just whatever. And then the police are going to arrest the persons and, oh, make sure you contact the media. I mean, you contact the police because we can't contact the police, even though the police call us in all the time. And heck, we drove two and a half hours to be here to help you out. You guys, this is just such nonsense. Give me an give me a break. This is so stupid.
they didn't solve anything. They're just riding on the coattails of some true crime that they think that might be able to, to make some sense of it. Okay, so let's let's just take a quick look at the website and what this guy looks like, because I know you're all curious. Okay, so here's their YouTube channel that has the video on it. It's um psychic Suzanne Vincent. I'll put a link in the in the description of this video. It's got 26,000 views, which is like piddly squat considering it's seven years old. If you have solved a crime with your amazing video, your intuition, you know, just using energy like Einstein, then <laughs> I'm quoting Einstein. Don't quit quote, don't quote Einstein. My gosh, they've got so these are, you know, solving crimes all over the place. They've got 3,500 subscribers. That's half, that's double what I have, but I've been in business less than 10 months and I'm not solving crimes. I'm just calling these people out. So if they've been solving a lot of crimes, the police use them all the time. The police call them in. I think they'd have more than 26,000 views on their video that they edited uh, and more than 3.5 thousand subscribers and only 28 comments one of them is from the child there that was there in the hoodie so i'm not impressed and i don't think anybody else would really be impressed and then here's the here's one of the is this the right one pennsylvania man arrested in 22 year old woman's cold case killing after informants come forward so somebody did come forward 22 years no, not 22 years, 16 years. Oh my God, this stuff is so awful. Walk, walk. Jesus Christ. Okay, so here's here's one of many articles, and they're almost all copy and paste of each other. The um, apparently police make arrest July twenty seventh, twenty twenty three, Pennsylvania, a Deary Township man. Um, his name is Charles Earl Ream. He was fifty three, so it's been sixteen years. You guys do the math on that. So they did get a C. I ain't given it to him because C could have been the last name, middle name, first name, you know, whatever. And how helpful is C? And there was a point where they were going ch 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 Chattanooga, Chucky or whatever they were saying. That's not helping either. Maybe his name is Chattanooga. Maybe his name is Chuck. I don't know, but that's not helpful. And I don't think just watching the clip again for like the third or fourth time I've done I don't think they're talking about the murderer because of the way the mother is saying that she, um, they call him um, this name, Chucky or whatever. Unless they're referring to possibly news reports that were out in 2014 of a potential, uh, the key suspect whose name is Charles. So they could have easily have known that. Um, they he's been a longtime suspect in the case. They killed her in her father's home, where she lived with her brother. That home was a that home was a hub of drug ac activity at the time. Um, the brother and the father were both incarcerated at the time of this murder. He was interviewed by the police in 2007. He had purchased heroin from Lang. That's what he says. The day before her body was discovered. He was arrested back in June of 2007 for unrelated drug possession charge and was on probation for one year. He was also arrested back in 2009 for criminal trespass. So it's somebody who's been in trouble with the law a lot. Um, let's see. The back door was forced open and the ha house was ransacked. Okay, so probably that was known. They interviewed a number of informants. Um, even into the last month, so probably June, who claimed that the guy admitted to killing her over drugs. Um, 
police work solved it. Nothing about any psychics giving them in some kind of information. After 16 years of perseverance and commitment shown to this investigation led to this arrest, we hope it begins to bring justice and some relief to Samantha's family. No mention of psychics. And, you know, if you're if you're solving crimes, and it takes four years, then you're probably not really solving crimes, I guess. Anyway, so I don't know if I'm going to spend more time on the psychic sisters and looking into their other uh, supposed solved crimes that they've done. It seems pretty gory. I, I really don't like doing this kind of stuff. But you to, if you're trying to look at the facts, they're making the claim that they help solve this case yet the police don't mention it the media doesn't mention it and you know the media would have mentioned it because that would have gotten so many click hits psychic solves crime you know psychic knew the name of the uh, killer psychic it, of course not there's no way that the media would not have gone after this hook line and sinker they're there taking pictures and they're there filming them for whatever reason, they called in a press conference or something. I don't know. Maybe this is helpful because it allows the media to get another look. You know, when they put this stuff on the air, then maybe there'll be more calls that are actually legitimate. That, that gives them a chance to, there was a $50,000 reward. So it gives a chance for hopefully the media to say, you know, it's been seven years. I'd like to have fifty thousand dollars, and I'll I'll come forward and, and give the information that needs to be given. Maybe, but it's just re-victimizing these families. And in this case, it didn't work because it was again another nine years. But you know, it's a gamble. I don't know. We do do this. If you had a crime committed on your family member, and years have gone by, and it's just like at a standstill you're not hearing from the police you feel like they're ignoring you you feel like your your child is just you know nobody cared would you um let the media back in in the hopes it might pressure people or make them remember or or something to get a fresh view of the case you know, I'm not in that situation, so I'm not really good at answer. I don't know if I have a good answer to that question. I I hope I wouldn't want bring a psychic in, um, to even for these reasons. I I really hope I wouldn't do that. But you know, desperate parents are going to do desperate things, and I I can't say that um, um I might not have done that i don't know leave it in the comments let me know let me know what you think you guys i'm i'm investigating these things trying to understand the tricks of these mediums and how it actually seems to at least convince a large segment of our population and i i find it the psychology of it fascinating um the things i always notice are what's missing like they didn't really give them any information whatsoever it was pretty rambling the video is a lot longer where they're going in and out of the house. They're talking about the dog. They're talking about the dolls they're carrying around. Um, it's just a bunch of hooey. And um, I'm sad to say that people fall for this all the time. And it's really sad. But, you know, when you're desperate, what are you going to do?